we finally got more room. We finally got more room because I went to the podcast studio instead of the uh, bedroom. Manny's here. Uh, we are going back and forth over and over and over the multi layers of excellence that is our Stack first song. The layers! Manny, what do you think about music production with Duke? <laughs> oh, dude, fuck this, man. <laughs> <laughs> It only took him two sessions to be sick of me. <laughs> He's better than most girls in that respect. <sighs> All right, so I challenged David to a six-month daily video thing, and then I fucking forgot it on my calendar until it is... I have 40 minutes to shoot this and upload it. So anyway, today's topic today, today, tonight... Oh. I don't even have time to edit this shit. Today's topic is on making a first impression. You're going to see all these videos on YouTube. You're going to see all these coaches, life coach people. They're going to tell you, oh yeah, look people in the eye, shake hands really well, you know, think confident thoughts so that you're confident and shit. And then, uh, and then when you walk in, people will get that impression from you. Let me tell you something, bro. The impression that people get is a mix from what you... Later, I love you. It's a mix from what... You're so beautiful. It's a mix from what you are projecting and what they have had in their previous reference experiences. So, uh, I tell the story all the time in the seminars. The, I dated a girl one time where she was she used to get like abused as a kid and um i'm like super adhd and so when i think i do this thing it's like right and um right before her father would get really really angry he would do this thing and be like right and uh i didn't know this and she didn't really know it consciously either but after a while we kind of figured it out and it was like she would get triggered and think that I was going to get all fucking angry and weird whenever I made this little, like, eye movement and had absolutely nothing to do with me. It, like, had everything to do with what she had previous experiences in the past, kind of mapped it to traumatic experiences, and then I kind of, like, reminded her of it. Like, you ever walk by, uh, you know, like, in the mall or whatever, and, like, some girl walks by with your ex-girlfriend's uh, perfume on, and you're just like... Damn, and then like all these fucking memories come back through your head and you're like, what the fuck? And then, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but like your your mind and your body are kind of triggered together in this like connected way. And you see these little micro expressions from people. You see how people carry themselves and uh, you map it to things that you've had in your experience. If you had some super good experiences around people who are like super bright eyed and, and adventurous and happy go lucky and all that whatever then you're gonna gravitate towards those people but if you've also had some bad experiences with those people you're gonna uh, not trust them right you have this uh, the multivariate way that you map experiences and emotions to the very uh, to the things that you can observe in your environment so at the what up gangster what up bro what up so, at the end of the day, here, I'll finish this shit later. So, as far as first impressions are concerned, you cannot control people's impression of you. Because... It's all based on what they map to the reference experiences. So, uh, I'm not saying that you can, you have to completely give up. Uh, there are a lot of common experiences to human behavior. Where the... Um... You know, you hear it in the Tony Robbins seminar and Sai and all that, where, you know, if somebody is, oh, if I turn the car on, it's going to be too noisy. I'm going to do this again. Hold on. Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff that we share in the human experience where, uh, like if somebody's downtrodden and their shoulders are slumped and they're, and your, and your body's kind of caved in and your vocal tonality is not very exciting and you just kind of love it right you, you know you're gonna map that to kind of a common breadth of experience across human existence and so uh, you're gonna get a lot more positive response from people if you're gonna be interested in who they are show the whites of your eyes a lot make eye contact at you know appropriate times and um, 
you know, mirror their body language and all that other stuff that you learn uh, from all of the other material out there. Uh, but the point is, at the end of the day, you're going to be you. And if you're going to try to act outside of your own uh, natural way of being, you're going to have to keep up kind of an act. It's going to take a lot of extra energy, and a lot of people can get really good at it. Like, you, as, as a pickup guy for fucking years, I was able to, you know, fly to a city, have total jet lag, get crazy, do, teach a whole seminar for eight fucking hours, and then go out at night and just crush it all night, you know, amp up my energy, do state generation, and get all crazy. Like, there's a, there's a time and place for that. But in general, you want people to judge you for who you are. And this isn't like the patented uh, normal advice, like, be yourself, bro, but like, in real life, you can't maintain a facade for very long. So... Um, when you're working on something specific and you're kind of moving out of your comfort zone and you're, and you're okay, I'm going to be a little bit more expressive or I'm going to try to find more value to offer people or uh, I'm going to uh, change my vocal tonality so I, I sound more confident, I'm going to make more eye contact or whatever you're working on for the night, you've got to be able to calibrate one way or the other. Like uh, when you're working on hard eye contact as far as like generating attraction and, you know, thinking that, uh, making people think that you're interested in them and all that. Um, you're going to start, it's going to be super try hard and you're going to be staring people down and a lot of people will get unnerved. They'll get, uh, they'll feel threatened. They'll feel, uh, uneasy around you. And, uh, you know, sometimes you want that to happen, but most times you want to be more inviting. You want to be more, uh, easygoing. You got to be more value providing because you're going to get a lot more, um, social alliances in the long run. So, uh, it comes down to a couple of different core concepts. First, self-awareness. You gotta be aware of kind of what you're putting out in the world so that um, you can, you know, put yourself in a different state of mind and give something else if you don't wanna be being received a certain way. You can't control how, what people think of you. Like I said, you know, they're gonna map it to whatever they've experienced in the past, but uh, you can uh, change things up and offer a different perspective as you move forward. Um, uh, in an interaction and calibrate to how they're reacting to you. You can see their micro expressions. You can see if they're looking a little uneasy or if they step back from you or whatever and you can calibrate and you know do that dance of communication that allows you to build real rapport with people. Uh, but <clears throat> so many of these guys in the self-help community and the NLP community and the pickup community, they're always like, oh yeah, you can totally control everything and uh, you know, you just got to master it and, blah, blah, blah. and you can to a certain extent, but at the end of the day, you have to, um, be able to be comfortable with being yourself as well. And, uh, as you're testing and going out of your comfort zone and creating new, uh, interactions, things that you haven't done before and constantly growing in your social skills, um, you will also have to learn to calibrate to whatever life throws at you and whatever you're throwing out. So if you walk through the bar and you're like, or you walk into wherever and you're like uh, super low key energy and you're like, blah, 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 blah. And somebody comes like tonight, I was just like, Ugh. I was working since five o'clock in the morning. I fucking went to Muay Thai class yesterday, got my ass kicked, my every muscle in my body hurts. And I'm just like, eh, I gotta go out. So I go to the bar. I love people and interactions or whatever. So I had two girls come up to me tonight and they were like, they're like, hey, are you doing okay, right? Because my body language was basically like, go fuck yourself, right? And uh, and in that moment, I could have chosen to be like, oh, no, blah, 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 blah. Or I could brighten up and take interest in who they are because they're engaging with me at all. Like, they, you know, they're, they're showing me, uh, you know, they care. So why wouldn't I appreciate that, make them feel validated for that, and, you know, have a bright conversation with them because, um, like, that's what I'm there for, is human interaction. Am I there to share my pain with people? No, that's not what I went out for tonight, so that's not what I'm doing. And um, it allowed me to kind of calibrate and have a couple of really good, deep conversations with people, show some love, you know, create memory, show uh, rapport, build rapport. And um, the... You know, the net result is I deepened relationships with a few people. 
when I went out and uh, even though I was dead tired and shit and I didn't let that stop me from moving forward however how I was presenting myself for suppression wise was very low key and very like uh, in their minds they uh, I looked sad and you know I explained no, no, I'm just tired as fuck and blah 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 anyways well, how are you like you know and uh, I was able to calibrate in that in that moment so I think one of the biggest skills in social awareness oh, I mean in socials in the social sphere is the ability to calibrate and be uh, give your best tools where they're properly used like like you can see how where people are in their spot in their head and then you know do your best to kind of melt with that and build rapport you don't have to be bright and funny and happy and cheery and positive all the time you can be you but you can also um, not let that being you make you feel like you need to be myopic about how you communicate because communication is a two-way street so even if I'm low energy even if I'm tired even if like a bunch of shit happened I was stressed out today it doesn't mean I can't engage the person in front of me with care respect adoration your validation any of those things that that they're looking to get from me when they're having a conversation with me right so um the first thing I was saying was uh, being self-aware of what you're giving out is important because it allows you to calibrate and the second thing I was going to say is that calibration is really the key here it's not um about setting a particular goal and then uh trying to, to hit it and you know trying to act way out of your comfort zone to to put on a front or put on an act and then master that act. Um, that is a very good exercise and uh, it will, you'll learn a lot by doing that, but uh, it's not the be all end all of human communication and social stuff, right? So um, I think it's much more important to be able to be comfortable with yourself, even in a low or a uh, stressful out, stress out state, and then uh, be able to still give love, affection, attention, validation, uh, give people what they need when they're interacting with you and you still get a net result of, of deepening relationships, building rapport, and uh, creating new opportunities in the future uh, with people as long as you are not myopically self-centered in your, in your focus and you focus on them and figure out what kind of value you can provide them. So, in my opinion, um, you know, just like everything else in the social world. Like, practice everything and keep what works and throw out what doesn't. And then, you know, as you move forward, like, through years of this stuff, you know, you'll revisit concepts and then learn something new because you're, because you're prepped for that new thing. You've kind of ascended a level or whatever. But uh, calibration is important. And your ability to kind of, like, move with other people in the space and do that dance and not step on their feet, uh, metaphorically speaking, is... Uh, better than any technique that you can use to uh, appear confident, appear positive, appear strong, appear authoritative, or any of those other things. So yes, practice those things, but um, your ability to kind of stop on a dime, find the value that you can give to somebody else, uh, and then provide it, is going to go way further in creating rapport and generating uh, useful and functional relationships in the future than any of the tactics for any particular mindset. Uh, so this is day one of the six month daily challenge, daily video challenge with my buddy David Secura. If you haven't seen his channel, click over there and um, you can watch us grow as content producers over the next uh, six months. I'm gonna probably put up all the day, pick up daily videos again um, and then uh, launch the new website in the next week and a half. And I'm working with a whole content squad uh, for more professional-ass videos that are not part of this challenge. Uh, so uh, there's plenty of content coming out of this channel. So keep here. If you're not subscribed, please do. And uh, till tomorrow, stay awesome.